Hi, I'm Emily and I'm still a level one chef. Hi, I'm Gabrielle and I'm a level two chef. I'm Saul, I've been a professional chef for the past 20 years. So today I'm gonna to be making kind of a knockoff eggs benedict and I have fried bologna, a poached egg, and a hollandaise sauce that I use a blender to make. It's super easy. So my ingredients for my eggs benedict, they're more of like an Italian twist. I have some focaccia, I have some prosciutto. It's gonna be delicious. So today I'm making an avocado toast with some grilled lobster, quail poached eggs, quail hollandaise sauce with a little bit of salsa matcha. So first, I'm gonna start with my protein. Bologna. I love fried bologna, so this is like a treat for me. I think it's pretty delicious. So first, I'm just melting a few cubes of butter, which I'm gonna use to fry my bologna. I love prosciutto. I'm gonna take the prosciutto, put it on the sheet tray, layer it so it presses down, and we're gonna put it in the oven, and it's gonna make it nice and crispy. So for the protein for my eggs benedict, I'm gonna do grilled lobster, and we're gonna start with the garlic. I'm gonna add some salt here, lemon zest, and then lemon juice. I'm not gonna add a lot, just a little bit, because we already have some zest. We don't want it to be that lemony. And now we're gonna add the butter. Salt, black pepper, and basically this, you can put it in any seafood dish that you like. All right, so I have my butter all melted in the pan and I'm just gonna drop my two bologna slices in. And now I'm just gonna like uh, wait for a minute. Just trying to get these hot and crispy, crispy-ish. A little crisp, just a little crisp on there. Eggs Benedict with bologna would be really interesting. Now it's time to prepare the lobster. And now what you have to do is remove the guts, we want the butter to stick to the lobster. Now I'm just gonna put it on the grill. Maybe right here. Now let's put this other one right here. This is, this is like slightly more budget friendly, what I'm doing. Gently cover them up, put a little blanket, place this sheet tray on top of it. This is a almost pound and a half lobster, so it will take 14 to 15 minutes. Ah, nice and floppy, just the way you want it. Beautiful. Done. So these are gonna go into the oven at 350 for about 10 minutes. Yeah, this is what we want. It looks like our lobster is ready. Now let's remove the meat from here. When the lobster meat removes that easily, that means perfectly cooked. Grab yourself a towel, use this part of the knife, and then... Oh, it's gone. And I make a mess. It's worth it, so worth it. You know what, I like chunks. I don't like too much slice. All right, so I have an English muffin here. I'm gonna use a fork to open this thing up because that is the way you're supposed to and I'm on the internet right now. English muffins have like the, the nooks and crannies kind of thing that people like. I like it. I like using focaccia because you end up getting kind of a similar effect because it has all those little dimples and holes so it sops up all the hollandaise and this is gonna work perfectly for my Eggs Benedict. I'm gonna be using sourdough bread because it's a little bit tangy and chewy at the same time. And this will make a perfect toast. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna toast my English muffin now. So instead of toasting it in the toaster, I'm gonna to go ahead and toast it in this pan. A little extra virgin olive, olive oil. oil. A little bit on both sides. Make sure you have enough olive oil because that's gonna make this dish crispier. A suggestion is put some weight onto the bread because I wanna see the beautiful grill marks on it. As you can see, it's starting to get that nice brown color. This one's ready, so this is what I wanted. I want this nice brown color. Oh la la, hello. I am Mr. Perfect Toast. Our toast is ready. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Toasting complete. And I'm just gonna butter this. It's nice and warm. I don't want it to like be overwhelmingly buttery, but I think that's a good amount. But butter is good. <laughs> Adding butter is perfect. I'm a big fan of butter, but I wanted to make some roasted garlic, which I'm just going to drizzle it with some olive oil, sprinkle it with a little fresh ground pepper, small pinch of salt. So I'm gonna put this in uh, to the oven at 350 for like 35 to 40 minutes. I'm making an avocado spread for my avocado toast. Avocado basically adds another level of flavor to any dish. Honestly, when it comes to avocado spread, guacamole, I like it chunky. We're gonna add some salt. Okay, now lime. I don't know, for some reason, I like to use my hands. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Next, I'm gonna poach my eggs. Dun, 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 dun. I'm not the world's best egg poacher. I'm okay, I'm not, I'm not great. So, I try out different gadgets, and in this case, I thought this one might be kind of fun. I have my water on a simmer. I'm going to crack an egg into my bowl. 
Uh, just try. Um, so I'm just gonna pour this egg into the little uh, simmering water cup, and that's that. <laughs> I want to be using quail eggs, which are very small, very delicate. The flavor is earthy, delicate, and grassy. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in vinegar to my water. That really helps to keep the egg together. I don't really know why. Normally when you do a poached egg, you have to have a hot water, no boiling. You do salt. And there's multiple ways to do this. You can slide it in on the side to help it keep together, but I really like to get sort of like a vortex going. We're gonna do a little tornado. I know, I've done this before, I did a tornado. Everybody likes when I say tornado. Because that kind of directs the volume of the egg into one spot rather than having it go all over the place and free fall. It just has a little pathway this way. And then I'm gonna just drop my egg very gently right into the middle there. Beautiful, it's looking beautiful. Voila. And like people do the swirly thing. I don't do that either. Are you doing it? I think it's doing it. So now we're gonna cook this for one minute and 20 seconds. You see how delicate this is? Can you guys imagine me doing brunch, 600 covers, making these little things? No, 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 no. It's a big no-no. All right, so I'm gonna just do a little tilt thing. Looks good. I think I have to be very gentle. There you go. It's like quivering. Uh, I feel like this worked. I'm gonna turn this thing off. I feel like this was like successful. I just, I feel like they're very delicate. Okay, so this one's looking, oh no. I took it out too soon. I wonder if I could salvage it, let's see. That's really unfortunate because now all that water is gonna go in and try and attack my precious yolk. So uh, let's check on this baby one. Okay, so I want to have the egg yolk running. Otherwise, it won't be a nice poach stick. I think this one's done. And honestly, I think I saved it pretty well. And that looks really nice to me. It's a pretty perfectly poached egg. All right, next up we're doing hollandaise sauce. This is like one of the classic sauces. It's also like a little challenging to make. It's a sauce made of egg yolks, white wine, clarified butter, lemon, a little bit of Tabasco, and salt. So what I'm using instead of hot sauce, salsa matcha. It's an emulsified sauce. So we're looking to essentially combine all these ingredients that wouldn't necessarily you know, stay together. You're making brunch. Maybe you're a little sleepy. Why not make a cheat hollandaise. I'm gonna combine everything in here except my hot butter, and I should get basically a good hollandaise sauce. So first of all, I need to make my salsa matcha. Two cups of olive oil. We are going to take the seeds out of these peppers. When I make my salsa matcha, I use three different types of peppers. I use chile pasilla for texture and flavor, chile ancho for more flavor, and for heat, I use chile de arbol. You have to make sure you stir all the time. If you can see the color of the, of the oil, look at this. It's nice and brown. I think it's about time. I'm gonna put them right here. Now, the thing with chile de arbol, the more you fry it, the more they'll become spicier for some reason. Okay, that's it. So we have the fried peppers. Now we're gonna add the garlic. That looks like it's ready. The peanuts, I shut the heat off because the oil is still really hot. And I'm waiting for the perfect moment to drop sesame seeds. Keep stirring. You remove it from the heat, oregano, and then the apple cider vinegar, a little bit. That's gonna add a little bit of acidity to the, to the salsa. And then we're gonna put it into the blender. So this is basically a pretty traditional hollandaise sauce, but I am going to be adding a little bit of lemon zest, kind of brighten the flavor and tie it in with some of those Italian flavors. Normally I use regular eggs. In this case, I'm gonna use 20 quilled eggs. It's time to crack some eggs. I put myself into this situation, but I'm gonna get myself out of this situation. All right, I'm going to start by separating out my yolks. Break out the there go, white. Ooh, that's a wet egg, egg white. <laughs> Egg yolk number one, number two. There the we third. go. There are my three yolks. The last one. Yeah. 20 quail eggs. Wow. The next thing I'm gonna do is juice my lemon. Just so it's ready to go. So I have some white wine here. Use something dry, something not too sweet, because these eggs are very tasty. And I'm, I'm gonna whip it. I'm going to add, I have Dijon mustard, heavy pinch of cayenne pepper. All right, and then a big pinch of salt. Put my lemon juice in, put my top on, and blend this thing up. The goal of the double boiler is to not cook my eggs, but to get them sort of like custardy. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this sauce. Now what I wanna do, I kinda wanna push the oil towards one side, because this is what we want, the paste. And then if it needs more, we add it more in the end. All these little bubbles, I'm basically just whisking air into the eggs. And I'm gonna be here probably like half an hour, 
doing this. And then I'm going to take my hot butter. Oh, yeah, that's hot. Uh, and I'm going to just scream it in while this blends. I want to do it really slowly. Oh, hello. Nope, maybe I'll turn that off. Yeah, All right, little. you just go, just go. Keep whipping. I think this is probably done. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and add this back to the heat for now. Woo! I'm going to be doing this for a very long time. Oh, I'm literally sweating. Oh, back to work, here we go. Home stretch, we're getting there. If I did this the other way, I would probably just still be whisking. But this way, much easier. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. This is the good old fashioned way. This is the way Julia Child would have done it. Okay, let's take a three second break. One, two, three, go. We're looking for the like a mayo consistency. Nice, thick, rich. Okay, I'm gonna add all the butter because I love butter. Now, I'm gonna season it, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in my salt. I'm gonna do a pinch of cayenne, nothing crazy. I love adding the cayenne because then you get those little pretty flecks of, flecks of red, and it's, it's very traditional. I didn't nail it. It needs salt, a lot of lemon. That egg yolk is intense. Wow. Let's do this thing. Time to assemble my eggs benedict. My first thing is my roasted garlic. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look. It looks beautiful. I don't want it to be too garlicky, so I'm really just thinking a clove each. So now that that's on here, I'm just gonna take a butter knife and it's so soft, I can just spread it like butter. Just a, just a kiss, just a kiss of garlic. Step number one, we're gonna add some avocado because I love to add avocado on everything. I even make avocado smoothies. Now, I'm not putting a lot of avocado because this sauce is really rich. The eggs are really rich. Avocados are also rich. So, I have my buttered bread, my buttered English muffin. I'm going to put my bologna on top. Next goes my prosciutto. As you can see, it's nice and crispy. And I'm gonna just go ahead and kind of crumble it on here. And now we're gonna get this beautiful green lobster. And guess what? I want a lot of lobsters. And then I'm gonna just take a little bit of arugula and sprinkle it on top. That's gonna give us a little color. Now the star of the show, my poached eggs gingerly place one on each of my toasts. You know what? I think we're gonna put four. But we don't wanna cover the lobster. That's there, everything looking good. Now I'm going to do the oh, hollandaise yeah. sauce. Yeah, let it just cascade over my poached eggs. I'm not gonna put a lot because it's really rich. It's so rich, I have no idea how rich this is. The thing that makes hollandaise, I think, really good is just remembering that it's Mostly butter. <laughs> My personal opinion is more hollandaise, the better. I would say it should at the very least be dripping down the side. Decoration of cayenne, only because this is what you always see at brunch restaurants, and that's the only reason that I do that. Now I'm gonna add salsa matcha. So we're just gonna do a little dot here and there. And it looks so pretty, look at this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, baby. Salmon caviar, of course, because quelled eggs, not enough. So I need to add another level of eggs. The flavor of the salmon caviar to me is a little bit fishy, but in a good way. A little Italian flat leaf parsley. parsley. I think that that just kind of ties it all together. And we're gonna garnish with cilantro macho, which I love. Cilantro macho, basically what it is, it's a male cilantro, and it makes the dishes look pretty. And these are my eggs benedict. And this is my eggs benedict. And this is my lobster quail eggs benedict. All right, let's eat. It's time to taste. I don't want to taste it, I just want to look at it. It's so pretty. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good. Mm. Mm. It's so good. It's salty, <laughs> creamy. I love it. It's rich. Mm. It's flavorful. It's delicious. It's really good. It's really, really delicious. Very happy. I mean, you know, as eggs Benedict knockoffs go. <laughs> The lobster with the guacamole, lemony guacamole, it's delicious. Then with the hollandaise sauce, it's another level. It's just, it's like a song. You have to have enough of, of guitar, of saxophone, of piano. When you put all those instruments together, a song is born. We're making songs. Eggs Benedict is a rich combination of bread, meat, eggs, and sauce. Let's see how each of our inventive chefs made theirs. Emily used turkey bologna. 
Bologna, or bologna, is a type of emulsified cooked sausage similar to a hot dog, but larger in circumference. It's persistently pink because of the addition of nitrites. When heated, the nitrites cause metmyoglobin, a brownish pigment in meat, to form. Upon further heating, the metmyoglobin goes on to form nitrosyl hemochrome. This is a pink compound, which is why Emily's turkey bologna is pink even after pan frying. It tastes good. You might think to yourself it doesn't taste good, but I'm telling you right now, it's delicious. Gabrielle added a small amount of vinegar to her simmering water and used a large spoon to form a vortex. This spinning water keeps the eggs compact while they're poaching. Egg whites become more alkaline as eggs age. The theory behind adding vinegar to poaching liquid is that the acid lowers the pH so that the naturally alkaline egg white becomes denatured and forms a solid due to the acid in combination with the heat of the water. You know, you don't want a runny egg white. Saul used quail eggs. The taste and chemical composition is very similar to chicken eggs, except when you consider their size. I mean, can you tell the difference? The shell is speckled and kind of pretty. Compared to chicken's egg yolks at 32% of total egg mass, quail egg yolks comprise approximately 33% of the total egg mass. This is a very small difference, but can impart an impact when it comes to the rich, creamy quality of the eggs. It's true. Take a look at the egg yolk. It's bigger than the egg whites. Hollandaise is an emulsified butter sauce. An emulsion is formed when two liquids that don't normally stay together do. You can think of emulsifiers as bridge molecules. Part of the emulsifier bonds with water-loving or hydrophilic compounds in one liquid, and the other part of the emulsifier bonds with the water-repelling or hydrophobic compounds in the other liquid. Egg yolks contain lecithin and phospholipids that act as the emulsifiers. Emily used a blender to make her hollandaise. This is fine because she was going to eat it right away. The blender breaks up a lot of the membranes on the different components in her hollandaise and probably won't hold together for any length of time. I'm not a fancy chef, I'm just an Emily. Gabby and Saul both made traditional hand-whisked hollandaise over a double boiler, which kept the temperature controlled. And the hollandaise is just like, the icing on the cake. Saul kept his theme and used quail eggs. 20 quail eggs. Saul elevated his hollandaise sauce by gently adding blended salsa matcha. What it is, is a mix of dry peppers with uh, peanuts, sesame seed, and a lot of oil. You have to be careful when making additions to a delicate hollandaise sauce. It's made of tiny spheres of butter suspended in an egg yolk and acid suspension. Additions can compress these spheres and make your sauce break. If you do get a broken sauce, you can simply add a few drops of water or lemon juice and it should bounce back. Adding these will increase the continuous water phase so that the spheres have room to reform as round spheres. Saul's an expert, so he blended his salsa matcha and hollandaise so smoothly. But I got this because I'm a professional. Eggs Benedict can be traditional or remixed to add your own personal spin on this delicious dish. Next time you're in the mood to make it, we hope you'll take some of these tips from our three extraordinary chefs.